Hey, BC. It's Jonathan, the Cheap and Cheerful Record Collector. I hope everybody's doing well out there today and enjoying the day. We had about a foot of snow yesterday here in Maine and it's starting to look like winter for a change, which is great. Um, this video is going to be a uh, Jazz Vinyl Tag 2024. Uh, this was started by The Waxed, who I didn't know at all until about two or three days ago when I saw their Jazz Vinyl Tag, watched the video, and then checked in, saw some of their previous videos, so I really enjoy this stuff. Uh, if you get a moment, please check his channel out, The Waxed, W-A-X-E-D. He has 10 questions for the Jazz Vinyl Tag this year, so let's get on it. First tag, first tag, first question is show a jazz album you had VCLT to this year. This wasn't this year, this was the last year. I have a good buddy who listens to strictly almost, almost completely classical music. A couple of years ago, he started, wanted to get into jazz, so he asked me for some suggestions, and I wanted to break him in easy, so I said, you know, how about Miles Davis' Kind of Blue, uh, Oscar Peterson, um, Dave Brubeck, uh, you know, basic stuff, stuff that we really wouldn't get him uh, crazy, so sort of, he could sort of dip his toe in. So he went and bought this next record on his own, and after one or two listens, decided it was a little too out there for him. So, lucky for me, he passed it on to me. And it is Miles Davis, Live in Tokyo. This was originally recorded in 1964. It was released in 69. And this is the Record Store Day 2019 release. This is a great record. I really enjoy it. Um, it has with him Sam Rivers, Herbie Hancock, Tony Williams, and Ron Carter, along with Miles Davis. Fantastic record. Um, I sort of wish he liked it, but I'm glad he didn't because I ended up with it. And nice little OB strip that came with it. So yeah, that was a VCLT. Uh, next question is, show a jazz album you have in mono and stereo. Uh, turns out this is also a VCLT from a couple of years ago from my buddy Brian at Shamrock and Records. And this is Thelonious Monk, my favorite jazz musician of all time. Uh, this is his album, Monk's Dream. This is a uh, 1965 repress of a 63 record, a uh, 63 release, and it is uh, on the Columbia Mono, and this is with Charlie Rouse, John Orr, and Frankie Dunlap. Um, love this record. This mono is not, it, it's good condition, not the best condition. So when I heard that it was being re-released in stereo, I jumped on it and I bought the Impex release of this album from 2017. Fantastic. I mean, it sounds, I mean, I love, I love having a new copy, of course, there is a stereo thing, but this sounds, they did such a great job remastering and repressing this from the original tapes. Just one of my favorites. So yeah, Impex 180 gram Remastered from the original uh, analog tapes. Thelonious Monk, Monk's Dream. Next question three. Let me write questions here. Showing a jazz album you have an OG and a reissue of. Uh, this is not an OG, it's the closest I have. And this is uh, Getz and Gilberto. This is a original, not original, from 1964. So it's an early stereo pressing. Everybody knows this record, Get, Gets in Gilberto with uh, Jobim. So this is a stereo pressing on Verve. This is the, you all seen the black Verve label, nothing, nothing to show there. And then I also picked up a 1982 OJC Japanese pressing, which is like minty clean and fantastic. What a great album. You know, the original the girl from Ipanema, blah, blah, blah. You all know that. But uh, here's the Japanese Verve label. And this actually was a uh, Goodwill pickup about five years ago. I mean, who, who buys a Japanese pressing of a great album like this and then just gives it away to Goodwill? I don't know, but uh, I was glad I was there to find it that day. All right. That's number three. Question number four. Show a jazz album by an artist not known for being a jazz artist, a jazz performer. So I'm picking somebody very much out of the uh, 
out of the box. And this guy is basically known as a um, cartoonist. He's the man that created Fritz the Cat and Mr. Natural and a whole bunch of other cartoons. And it's R. Crumb. And he has a band called R. Crumb and his Cheap Suit Serenaders. This is uh, the first one he put out. This is from 1974 on Blue Goose Records. You probably know R. Crumb. He did the cover for Big Brother Holding Company album, among other things. This is great. This is ragtime. Um, yeah, basically ragtime music. But for hot tunes, ballads, blues, waltzes, old standards, the Cheap Suit Serenaders give them what they want at a recent New Year's party. There they are. It's the Cheap Suit Serenaders. That's their first one. This is the second one they put out. Cheap Suit Serenaders number two. This I picked up when I was out in uh, uh, Washington, uh, Seattle area a couple of years ago. Went out and hung out with Massey for a day, and that was sort of fun. And I was when he went to um, a record store there and saw this and got excited, grabbed it. And then they also have Cheap Suit Serenaders number three. So I definitely uh, urge anybody who is into that kind of music. Great stuff. Um, this one has Bob Brosman in it, great musician, all the great, great musicians, but a lot of fun. Uh, R. Crumb and his Cheap Suit Serenaders. Number five, Show Jail's album that was initially shelved and issued on a vinyl many years after its recording. All right, well, one of my favorite is Grant Green, and this is his album, Slick. It's a two-record set. This was a Record Store Day release, too. Uh, originally recorded in 1975, but not released until 2018. Um, what I love about this record... Side one, I mean, sorry, record one is pretty standard Grand Green, what you expect from great jazz guitar playing. And their second record is completely funky. It's an amazing funk album. He really got into it. There's Grant. It came with a great booklet with stories and pictures about Grant, about the recording. So, yeah, Grant Green, Slick. Originally recorded in 1975 and not released till 2018. If you like some funky jazz, and I mean funky jazz, you can't miss with this great, great album. All right, next one, number uh, six. Show a jazz album that was issued as a private pressing. Well, I'm not really sure if this is a private pressing, but I can't find any information on it. I found a little bit on uh, Discogs, but a different colored pressing. And this is an album called Hot Jazz, 1927-1929. Nothing on the back, very clean. And it just says, 16 rare performances by the orchestras of Carl Fenton, Benny Muroff, George Belshaw, Herb Woodoff, Herman Waldman, and others. Limited edition for collectors. So, I, like I said, I can't say that it's a... Uh, on the old master's label. So I'm not sure if it's a uh, private pressing or what, but definitely it's not something you see around a lot. The one on um, Discogs shows it with green lettering. So I have no idea why this one has the maroon lettering. And it's just pasted on, just a little sleeve pasted onto a white label. So on the white cover, I mean. So there you go, Hot Jazz, 2729. Um... Show a jazz album that is an excellent introduction to free jazz, avant-garde or spiritual jazz. Uh, I'm not into those genres really much. I have some free jazz, but I'm really not a big fan. But if you, I figured if you're starting to and you want to just dip your toe in, a good way to start would be Miles Davis in a silent way. A uh, beautiful album and has definitely has a elements of free jazz throughout it. Uh, this with besides Miles Davis, you have Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea on pianos, Wayne Shorter, Dave Holland, Joe, Joe Zwinelli, uh, John McLaughlin on guitar, Tony Williams on drums. Everybody knows this record. This is a UK pressing, which I picked up a while ago, in excellent condition. Love this record. In a silent way. Um, 
Show Jazz album that is an example of cheap heat. I assume that means I assume he means something you can buy cheaply, and it's still a great album. And I see this all the time, and it's a great album. And it's a Louis Armstrong, Ambassador Satch. You know, I remember watching the um, uh, documentary on PBS, uh, Burns documentary on jazz. And he said, uh, every record store <clears throat> should have a sign with an arrow pointing down and saying, with the jazz section saying, start here. And it should always point to Louis Armstrong. So I got to agree with that. So this record you can find really cheap all over the place. And a great, recorded during his European tour, European concert tour of 1955. So yeah, cheap, great jazz album. Um, show jazz album you're looking forward to being reissued in 2024. Well, I'm not looking forward because I don't think they're going to be, but there's a jazz artist that I love and it's fairly rare. I wouldn't say he's completely unknown, but it's sort of rare. And I would love to see them do some represses of him. And I hope that he finally gets his due. And that is a, a great guitar player uh, from Maine, actually, originally. Um, but then moved to Canada. And that's the great guitarist, Lenny Bro. This is his album from 1969. And this is Lenny Bro Live. If you don't know Lenny, he played... Um, six string guitar, he had an eight string guitar, seven string, all sorts of instruments he played, just amazing musician. Um, I guess the story I heard about him is that he was playing when he was like 15 years old, playing in his parents' country western band, and um, he was so <clears throat> into the jazz and into improvisation, he improvised a couple of lines in the middle of the show, and afterwards he went backstage and his father went up to him and sma slapped him in the face and so don't ever play that jazz shit on my show again. And that night, Lenny packed his bags and left home. So there's Lenny Bro. There's another album of his. This is from um, 80... Wait, I wrote this all down, if I can find it. Oh, this, this is from 69 to 88. This is the uh, Mo Bro, the Adelphi Jazz Line. Uh, recorded 1978 in New York City. Then there is, uh, what else we got? When Lightning Strikes, Lenny Bro. And Lenny Bro and Brad Terry. And finally, The Last Sessions, Lenny Bro. Lenny died fairly young, drugs and alcohol. Really a shame, but a great musician. Yeah, he did on the Delphi line label. That's the label he was on for a while. Uh, he's, the, uh, he's the guitar player that uh, Chet Atkins said, the greatest guitar player I've ever heard was Lenny Bro. So if you don't know Lenny, if you can find any of his records, I mean, they're not hard to find, especially here in New England. You see them around. But if you ever see anything by Lenny Bro, I urge you to check it out. Great stuff. And question number 10. A jazz album you would consider a grail that you picked up in 2023. All right, this record I had bought at a yard sale a number of years ago, and it was a Japanese pressing, and it was worth a lot of money, and I sold it. I bought it for like 10 bucks. I sold it for like $200. I, I just couldn't keep it. My, and after I sold it, I was really beating myself up for selling it because I really liked it. And I was so happy to see that last year it finally came out. Oh, yeah, two years ago it came out. I bought it last year on uh, a repress. And <clears throat> it's Jerry Mulligan, Night Lights. What a beautiful, beautiful album. Um, with Jim Hall, Bill Crow, Dave, Dave Bailey, Art Farmer, and Bob Bruckmeyer. Newland Records is 2021. Reissue. Jerry Mulligan, Night Lights. Came with a nice sleeve. Of the, uh, article about the recording. Uh, beautiful record, and I'm really glad to have it back in my collection. Um, actually, I just looked up now, and I guess since they re-released it, the original Japanese pressings I have had, I sold, not worth nearly that much at all. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much, and until next time, peace.